And that's how my pappy told it to me. You know, sometimes I wish I could have ridden on those old wagons. Yeah, I've always had a keen interest in the history of the Old West myself. I guess that's why I hang on to that old buggy there. Yeah, she's a beaut. How old is that buggy? Well, my grandpappy told me that it dated back to 1865. My great-great-grandpappy and my great-great-grandmother courted in that buggy. If they could talk, I'm sure it'd have some tales to tell. <laughs> probably some tales it shouldn't tell. Yeah, probably so. You know, that buggy reminds me of a buggy I seen at my friend Eli's place. You know Eli? Yes, I know Eli Anderson. He's an old friend of mine. He's that feller that restores those old wagons and buggies and such. Yep, very same. Have you heard of Wagonland? No. What is Wagonland? Wagonland Adventures is where folks can go and learn about the history of the Old West. The legacy of uh, horse-drawn transportation. Our rich pioneer heritage. Well, that's something. See, it all started about 45 years ago. Hmm. From an early age, Eli Anderson was fascinated with the history of the West. His interest was piqued with a visit to Pioneer Village in the second grade. Eli's mom was a rude mother and went on the field trip with the class. As the village was toured, Eli's mom told him of all historical items she had grown up with. Eli was interested to learn what had happened to the relics of the past, but now these things seemed to be disappearing. Eli felt a great need to preserve what he could of the relics of the West when he could find them. As a young boy, he would bring home pieces of purple glass and pottery. His big dream was to have a pioneer museum where children could learn of the past as he did. He always wanted a buggy. He acquired one when he was in high school. The wheels were collapsed and the wood was in need of repair. He found a wheelwright that would restore the wheels for 500 bucks. That was a lot of money to Eli, but he became very committed to using his savings to restore this buggy. When he got that buggy restored, he realized all buggies were not the same. Horse-drawn transportation was an era that was not being preserved and would soon be lost if something was not done. If the children couldn't see how people lived and traveled, they couldn't appreciate the advances in transportation of the last 100 years. mile through Eli Anderson's farm they wound. Wagons, buckboards, traps, surreys with fringe on top, even a horse-drawn hearse. Anderson has collected them from Alaska to Ohio and lovingly restored them. Authentic parts have to be handmade and uh, many of them I have handmade and produced those parts. Uh, the wagons that uh, you see here today, the majority of them have been worked on and repaired. Today he lined them up to make a point. If you want to film a Western or anything else, come to Utah. Well, it's nice to know that we have these resources in the area. These are, this is a real rare find here. Uh, you know, some of the theme parks don't have anything to compare with this type of uh, collection. Rod Jackson, KTVX 4 News, Tremont. Well, Utah Centennial Wagon Train has just rolled into historic Cove Fort, Utah. Well, their most distinguished passenger tonight is LDS Church President Gordon B. Hinckley. <laughs> Mormon president and his wife rode in a little black Surrey at the head of the 60 wagons. President Hinckley met the train near Cove Fort because of the significance the fort has to his own pioneer heritage. Back in 1867, Brigham Young sent Hinckley's grandfather Ira to this area to build a refuge for weary travelers. In his speech tonight to the crowd, Hinckley will talk about his, his heritage, the historic fort, and what the wagon train legacy means to Mormons. Today was the end of the trail for Utah Centennial Wagon Train. Well, the wagon train pulled into Cedar City this afternoon, the last stop of a 24-day, 466-mile trek through the state. 
it's going to be sad to say goodbye to the many friends that have been made here. And friends made all along the trail from Logan to Cedar City. Thousands of Utahns lined the roads to help the Wagoneers celebrate Utah's roots. What, what do you think of this? Well, I've been watching this for 30 days, and I'm telling you, anyone who has been on this ride has seen the state in a unique way, and they've done an almost heroic feat. This, is, this has been hard work, and they've done something I'm sure will never happen again in 100 years. We made it. Finally. Riding into 24 sunsets, that seems plenty. Michael Rawson, 2 News, reporting. Wagonland Adventure recently purchased property on Historic Point Lookout. The Hensley cut off of the California Trail passed through and camped at Point Lookout. The returning Mormon battalion took their wagons over it to the Salt Lake Valley, thereby adapting the cutoff to wagon use. These immigrants used Point Lookout as a strategic site to watch for any danger headed toward them. They camped here and obtained fresh water from the Salt Creek Springs at the base of Point Lookout. Point Lookout was also a winter home for the Shoshone and Fremont Indians. The Wagonland Adventure collection of horse-drawn vehicles is a national and world treasure, but it lacks a first-class facility to house and display the 250-plus horse-drawn vehicles. Wagonland Adventure will provide interactive exhibits that will offer educational as well as an entertaining experience for the young and old alike. If we don't preserve the culture and way of life of the Old West, who will? It's going to take a tremendous commitment of the Wagonland Adventure Foundation, of the people across the nation and around the world to complete this project and keep it alive. We need your help. We need folks like you who will give of themselves and their substance. Grab hold of a spoke and a wheel and help us grow. The Wagonland Adventure Foundation invites you to support the foundation with your gift of support sponsorship, and money. Hey, thanks for listening.